Welcome back to Austin Studio. Today we're going to be talking about the brass family. The brass family is one of four instrument families that we use to separate and categorize all instruments. Now, last week we talked about the woodwind family. Today we are talking about the second family, the brass family, soon to be followed up by the string family and the percussion family. The brass family, much like the woodwind family, is an instrument family where all of the instruments are played by blowing through them. Oftentimes, these two instrument families are categorized together as wind instrument families. Specifically, woodwind was the last one we talked about, and this one are brass instruments, sometimes named brass winds. All of these instruments are only played by blowing through them. You don't have to hit them with a stick, you shouldn't hit them with a stick, and you're not playing them with any strings that you're bowing or plucking on them. You are simply blowing through the instrument, and then there are other things you do to change those notes and the different sounds on that instrument. Now, just like last week, I want to go through the five ways that we can decide and decipher whether an instrument is meant to be in the brass family or if it actually is a woodwind instrument. Just because you blow through it doesn't really tell us which one it's going to be in. So, our first identifier is going to be the mouthpiece. Now, the mouthpiece, unlike woodwind mouthpieces, which could be a lip plate you blow across, like the flute or piccolo, or like the single or double reed instruments that have a mouthpiece that involves a reed, all brass instruments have the same type of mouthpiece. Not the same exact mouthpiece, but the same type. And what I mean by that is they have cup mouthpieces, cup-shaped mouthpieces. This right here is a trombone mouthpiece, and the mouthpiece is a cup shape, and it's got a little bit of a piping off to the end of it. And so I know you can't see it up close, but this is a mouthpiece for a trombone and I'll make sure to upload a picture of it on the side. This is a, a trumpet mouthpiece. You can see the difference in size from just right here alone, that the cup is much bigger on the trombone mouthpiece, which is a lower brass instrument, and the trumpet mouthpiece is much smaller, which is on a higher instrument. Again, we've talked about this before. I think smaller and shorter is gonna be higher pitched. Bigger and longer is gonna be lower pitched. Even though this mouthpiece is longer looking right now, it is just for the sake of fitting into the instrument. This one fits in the instrument the same way. It's about, I'm talking about the concept of the cup shape itself and how big it is giving the space for that lower sound to resonate. So we're gonna talk about these mouthpieces for a second. The way the mouthpieces work is, instead of just taking it and sticking it in your mouth, which you don't wanna do like other instruments, or blowing across it, doesn't really do anything. However, you're gonna buzz your lips together like this. You can tell that I'm not much of a brass player. I struggle with it myself. When you make that buzzing sound and put the mouthpiece up against it, and you can hear a little bit of a shake in there, a really professional player would not have that shake in there. I do not play brass instruments enough to keep my lips trained and prepared to keep a consistent note. Hence, it has that vibrato, that uh, sound to it. Shaking a little bit. Now, when people practice, they often start on the mouthpiece, and they'll try to play a certain note and try to see if they can play a melody. The same goes for the trombone mouthpiece. Much, much, much lower. And when you put these inside of the instrument, that is what gets you your sound. So we're gonna talk about one of our instruments and our second identifier, which is tubing. Now I don't have a French horn with me, but we will see a video of one. And that instrument has a lot of tubing with it. We, I do, however, have a trumpet with me. And mine actually has a leather casing on it, which I'm gonna take off right now. Uh, this is my trumpet. You can see there is a lot of tubing. When I put this mouthpiece in, and I put it in here and blow on it, you'll hear how the sound changes. Makes a sound going through it. This instrument goes here with the air, all the way through, down, into one of the valves, which we'll talk about afterwards. Goes through multiple layers and rounds of tubing before it finally comes out the end. And the other instruments of the woodwind family are not like this. The most we see, other than a straight shape, like a clarinet, flute, piccolo, uh, bassoon, 
oboe, all of those instruments are pretty much straight, except for the saxophone, which has one curl at the bottom, and the bassoon can have that curl on a contra bassoon or near the, uh, right near the neck as we come out to the uh, double reed. So, there is a lot of tubing on this instrument. Uh, the way that this tubing works is it is all wound up. If I stretch this out and took it out, it'd be very long. A tuba, which we'll see afterwards, which is the largest instrument from the brass family, that one stretches out extremely long when we, when we stretch it all out. So, I want to move along with this and get to our third identifier, which is the flared bell. When we follow this tubing from the mouthpiece all the way through, it comes out a flared bell at the end. You'll see this very familiar shape on clarinets, on saxophones, because that is where the sound is going to project. Now, a trumpet has it where it faces forward, and so does a trombone, but a French horn will have theirs facing the other direction, and some marching instruments have theirs facing up or away. So that is where your sound is coming out from. The fourth identifier is that it's made of metal. Brass is a type of metal, and all these instruments, for the most part, are made of brass. You might be thinking, uh, Mr. A, this doesn't look like it's made from brass. You think, this trombone looks a lot more like it's made from brass. Yes, but this specific trumpet right here has a silver coating on it. Now, you can have different types of coating on your instrument to make it look different, such as I have a saxophone that has got a black lacquer on it, so it looks black. It is not a metal that is black. It is just covered with that type of coating. So that is why some of these instruments are silver. You will also see that some brass instruments are also being made of plastic, which is very new such as the P-Bone, which is a plastic trombone, and now even there is plastic trumpets, French horns, and the most common one for generations before was the sousaphone, a marching tuba that is often made of plastic just because of the wear that it would get from water when you're out marching. You don't want that going all the way down your the flare bell at the top and going inside the instrument. But with it being plastic, it was much easier to get out and to dry. And now the last part and last identifier will be valves. Now, valves on an instrument are these right here. There are three valves, these buttons they look like. These valves push down and they're pouncing back up because there is a spring on the inside. And these valves, when pressed down, right now the air is going straight through all the tubing. When I press this down, it has holes on the inside of here that line up perfectly so that when I push it down, for example, air is now being rerouted down through another tube that it was not previously being routed through. And so if it is being, before it went straight through and around, but now it's coming through an extra amount of tubing, that means your tubing is now getting longer. Remember, the longer distance it has to travel without anywhere, any holes in it for, it to, for air to escape, the lower that sound is going to get. It's going to change that. And then also, it could be a higher note, even if you press this down, because of how fast your lips are going. Remember, these two components go one, in, in, one with another. So if you are blowing harder and faster, even though you have a longer tube, you're reaching a different harmonic. Now I'm not going to get deep into harmonics here, but that is how you're getting that higher note even though you might have the tube lengthened. Um, so there's a lot of components there. Now all brass instruments have valves, and you'll see the French horn has rotary valves as well. There's look like little, uh, their valves look sort of like pedals on the bottom of a piano. However, I want to show you the trombone real quick before we go on and watch some of these instruments live. The trombone does not have valves. This instrument gets its mouthpiece put in and you can play through it and instead it has what's called a slide which is right here and so I've got to unlock it and it locks it for safety reasons and then when you play it you change it by pulling the slide in and out. And so when people are playing this, they know that one note is here. And they keep going on and there are positions that they call them. We'll talk about those more later when we start watching some of the trombonists play their instrument. So we've got our five identifiers. Our first being the mouthpiece. Our second being the tubing. Third being the flared bell. And fourth being the type of metal it is made out of. And fifth, the valves other than the trombone, which uses a slide. However, there are valves on some trombones. You can get a valve trombone that has it just like the trumpet, or some of them have one valve that is used for dropping the note to a lower octave or hitting it in a different range. So with that being said, let's go ahead 
and watch some of these instruments being played. What you're listening to right now is Senorita by Sean Mendez and Camila Cabello. This cover is being done by Cesar Horna, and he is playing the trumpet horn. Uh, and he shows some great angles of this instrument right now. You'll see his is made from brass while mine was made of silver. And see how he changes the notes by pressing down each of the valves. And it's pressed up against his lips. Notice one thing that I might have the mistake of that he does not. His cheeks are not puffed out very far. They're not... He's got them nice and tight enough. So he's got control with his air in there, but he's not just, which is not good. You don't want that in your posture. You're hearing two notes at once right now, which means he is looping over himself. So he's playing one part in the video, but the second part is also recorded in the backing track. Now let's talk about the trumpet. The trumpet is a brass instrument that has the highest register in the entire brass family. Now what that means is this instrument can go higher than all of the other instruments right now. You can hear him playing some really high notes. And in the trumpet world, they often call it screaming. They are screaming a note up so high that it's just almost like as if you were screaming. Uh, trumpets were used for hundreds and hundreds of years. Now, we've got some information showing us that even up to 1500 BC, trumpets were being used and different variations of horns for things such as entering into battle in a war or for hunting. And many of these hunting horns, which I do not have mine on video right now, would be used for like fox hunting. And there is even illustrations of King Arthur and his troops using horns in fox hunting, where you would then blow on the horn and play a certain note or a certain series of no notes to explain that the fox is running in a certain direction. Um, these instruments have been used mostly since the 15th century as a musical instrument rather than just a warning signaling horn and are used in pretty much every genre of music from classical to pop as we can see here or jazz which they are very common in and so on and so forth. You can see he also has the uh, same cover around the valves that I had. That is just so that the oils from his hands are not getting all over the instrument the whole time. Cool. So, we're gonna move from there and move on to the French horn. Now, the French horn is a little different than uh, the trumpet in that it has a similar mouthpiece. However, that's very thin like that. However, you can already see this instrument has got a lot of tubing. F Horn Patrick is about to play for us Memories by Maroon 5. As you can hear right now, it might sound a little familiar. Now he's doing what's called looping, and we've talked about this before, where all of the background parts, other than the drums, are played by him, and he records it into his computer and then hits the next button. So he's recorded each of the parts for Memories, and now he's playing over top of it. Notice that his valves are not buttons, per se, that go up and down. Rather, they are sideways, little pedals by his fingers. You'll see him again when he picks his hand back up. He's changing his arrangement right now. But the biggest thing that makes the French horn so different compared to every other instrument in the brass family is the fact that the bell is not faced at you. That flared bell is facing the other direction, which means that oftentimes they'll play sideways to get that sound out or have to play a little louder. Now his hand is also inside of the bell. Um, that changes sort of the timbre or the sound quality of what you're getting out for each note. And if you take your hand and cover the bell all the way, which is called stop torn, where they put their hand in and cup it sideways, every note is actually a half step lower. And so they'll have to play one note half step higher to get the right note that they want, but it gives it a very tight nasally sound. And so this instrument is known for being able to create a variety of interesting different sounds. I need a beard like that. I'm working on it. So, you can see how the instrument curls around in a many different ways. There are two different types of French horns. One is called the single horn, and one is called the double horn. It depends on how many different tubes are going around it, 
And then there is a, another, you can see barely where his thumb is on the hand that is playing the valve. There's a little switch right there, a valve right there. That valve changes it from which horn is being activated. And where the wind is then going through, is the air going through just this part of the horn? Or is it going through another part of the horn? Or back and forth between the two? So, we're going to move off of the French horn and move on to the trombone. Once again, we're looping here. This is Christopher Bell. Uh, Christopher Bill, I should say. Sorry, I'm thinking of that bell. He's got it right in the camera, which is a great angle. And he is looping his audio again. Now notice this trombone that he has. Looking at this, this trombone right here versus the one that he's playing now, he switched out his two trombones. And the trombone that you're seeing on the back wall is the bass trombone. It has extra tubing. Remember, the more tubing, the lower it's going to have for that sound. And it's got a valve on it. That's where he's able to get those really deep notes that are digging down in there. And then he switched to the traditional trombone, which is what I held him. This might sound like Happier by Bastille and Marshmallow right now. It might not yet, but you'll notice that as he keeps building each part in, it slowly will sound like that song, which is what he is trying to cover in this loop cover right now. Notice sometimes his hands are only moving a slight bit to get these notes. Other times he's got to really reach out for different notes. You're also getting that wheel, wheel sound because you're able to slide the notes. When you're playing an instrument with bells, you can't really get that in between. It's either this note or this note. It's not this note into the middle. It doesn't work as easily on these. Whereas on the trombone, you can slide right from this note to this note and go right up on in between. It's like taking two crayons. Are you gonna go from orange to yellow? Or if you had a special crayon that you could change it across the slider as you went, you'd go orange, yellow. You could slide in between the two. Think of it like that with the trombone. So in a way, you've got to be even more accurate when playing this instrument. He's got to line that slide up at the exact right spot, because unlike the other brass instruments where you push down a valve and then hope you're pushing the right amount of air through, to get that note, you've got to hope you're getting the right amount of air and you've got to have the slide on the trombone at the exact right position. Now on a trombone, there are six positions that we talk about. And so most of this melody he's playing in first position, and second, and third. Some of it's coming down to the fourth position, but it goes all the way out to the sixth and even the seventh position on the very end, which is not used as often. Oh, there's a good slide. He had a good slide there to demonstrate. When you take the slide and you lengthen it out, that's changing its pitch because it's getting longer. And then it changes depending on how much air you're pushing through and how you're buzzing through it. All right, we're going to cut him off and move on to our next instrument, which is going to be the euphonium. The euphonium, which is sometimes mixed up with the baritone, is often nicknamed the mini tuba by some people. As it looks very much like the tuba, and he is again live looping, just like our previous musicians. This is a tuba visionary, and he's going to loop a drum track with his microphone clipped onto his euphonium. Three valves, like most instruments, three or four valves. Now you can hear three different parts happening because he's live looping. The tubing goes around and around. Notice the tubing is bigger and longer. It's a much bigger instrument, which is why it's able to get those lower notes. Now, the euphonium is a low voice instrument which actually comes from the Greek word euphonus, meaning well-sounding or sweet-voiced. You can hear how it can do the high-pitched voices nice and lulling, and then also these lower notes too. Now, it's often can 
fused with the baritone horn, which I talked about before, but they differ a little bit in the size. And I can show you a picture in a moment of a baritone versus a euphonium, but they differ a little bit in the size of the instrument, of the tubing, and of the bell. However, they are both uh, very similar in that they are brass instruments with a flared bell that are played upright like the tuba. We're gonna move on to the tuba next. In the, this video of the tuba, this is probably the most popular song of a couple years ago, being Let It Go from Frozen, and it's accompanied by piano as well. The tuba is the largest and lowest pitched instrument in the entire brass family. Uh, it is very big in comparison, where the bell of the tuba, you could fit your head inside that, whereas a trumpet is not gonna fit on, on your head. That's just one way to give you an example and of showing you how big it is. You can see it next to this adult playing it right now. And the mouthpiece covers his entire lips. Whereas the trumpet is much smaller mouthpiece. You can hear how much lower it is. It's also got a fourth valve on there common to have three to four valves on many of these brass instruments. Now look at all that tubing. If you stretch a tuba out from the mouth descent to the flared bell all the way, you stretched it out, that would be nearly as long as a bus. As a school bus, you would drive to school. So there is a lot of tubing there, which is why it gets such a low, low, low note. And again, he's able to hit some higher notes right now, again, just because of how the harmonics are working and how fast and tight his lips are when blowing the air through and how much air he is pushing through. So, we're going to wrap it up here as he gets to our next chorus. I highly suggest you check out this video uh, of uh, Scott Sutherland playing the tuba for Let It Go from Frozen because it is really hysterical this big costume change he does in the following chorus. But we're gonna cut it off. Thank you for joining us this week to learn about the brass family including the trumpet the French horn, the trombone, the euphonium, and the tuba. There are many other instruments that we didn't talk a lot about, such as the baritone in showing a video and its differences, and the trumpet family as a whole. There are many instruments within the trumpet family, such as like the saxophone family last week, whereas the trumpet family can break into cornets, flugelhorns, mellophones and baritones, marching baritones, which start to go towards the baritone euphonium line. The mellophone is similar to the French horn line. There is the cornet, there's the piccolo trumpet. There are a variety of instruments in between that are members of the brass, and brass family that we don't traditionally talk about that all exist though. And I can always provide links below to many other of the instruments in the brass family that we didn't see today. However, I think that's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you join us next week when we talk about the string family being both orchestral strings and the guitar-like plucked stringed instruments. And until then, musically speaking, it's been Mr. A. See you later.